How about uh, some Watch This Jerks? Sure. So did you want to talk about all the big Marvel announcements? I saw you put it on the... on. The oh, I didn't. Line. I was just surprised that you didn't. I figured that you would be into that. I mean, of course I'm into it, but I'm more into it like when it happens. Got it. <laughs> like, well, I, I feel like there's a lot to talk about. Yes, they announced a lot of new of the new Marvel timeline at San Diego Comic-Con, just so people know what we're talking about. It's going to be, I think it's six things a year over the next two years. That was that's going to be phase five. And they announced the very beginnings of phase six, which opens with two Avengers movies. So could be some interesting stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to I mean, who are we kidding? I'm looking forward to all of it. I'm going to watch it all. I know Cheapy's going to say there's too much of it and not watch it all. And uh, that'll be that. It's not a question of too much of it. I think it's if you people want to enjoy that, that's whatever. You know, it's great. I just think like, I don't know. I've seen a lot and I don't know how different it's going to be for me. Like how exciting it is for me to watch that. At this point. I don't know if I'm looking at it right now. I, you know, cause it's uh one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, oh, 12, yeah. 12 things, six things over two years. Six, I don't know. Six if, didn't seem like enough. There was a lot, there was a lot going on. It, there was a lot going on, but as far as like mainline MCU stuff, it's quantum mania, secret invasion, guardians, three echo, the Marvels and Loki. Uh, next year and then in 2024 it's blade iron heart daredevil aga the harkness uh captain america and the thunderbolts they're still making captain america movies yeah they're gonna make a sam wilson captain america yes, movie he's, instead oh, of right. a sam wilson Going captain america no yeah. <laughs> he's gonna get the loan this time i mean no one's gonna say no to time. captain america honestly i think doing that as a movie instead of a tv show again is a smart idea i don't think the tv show aspect worked for that i think if that was like a tight <laughs> two hours and 15 minutes it would have been a much better received uh situation do you remember in superman 2 when superman gives up his power so he can marry lois lane sure yes. remember uh -huh. that and do you remember he goes into the diner and there's like that big bully guy. Yeah, and he it's, gets like, it's like the best scene of the movie. It's, hard, it's like heartbreaking as like a child fan. But yes, like you see Clark Eck get his ass kicked by this. His name was like Red, I think. Red or Reg or Reg. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I think gets it's his red. ass kicked. I think gets, Red. I think you're right. I'm going to stay. Could be Red. Yeah. Gets his ass kicked. And then, of course, like spoiler at the end of the movie, when Superman gets his powers back, Clark Kent goes back to that very same diner and you know embarrasses red badly with his does, super strength does the, he does the i've been working out yes he says he says it i've been working out <laughs> i've been working he out throws some money because he, he busted up the place mm -hmm. he throws him in a pinball machine right um i forgot what what, what analogy i don't know i was, I was wondering right where are you going with this it's a nice story what were we talking about what were we talking, we're about? talking about captain america oh yeah so cat so in in the new captain america movie he's gonna go back to that same bank where he got rejected for the loan in the Captain America uniform, and he's going to be like, he may have to break some shit, is what and I'm saying. And he's still going to get rejected for a loan. But he I may will say this. I I think three movies and three TV shows a year is, I think, a good amount without being overwhelming for, at least for me. Now, that doesn't include the Spider-Man stuff, though, right? No, that doesn't include the Spider-Man TV, sh the Spider-Man cartoon that's coming out, and any <laughs> other, like, Sony movies. Spider-Man doesn't count? That's like, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's, I'm enjoy. not saying it's not a lot. I'm just no. saying I think it's... They did, like, a hundred things, it feels like, in the last year because of the pandemic and trying to scrunch three years' worth of stuff into a year and a half. They're not doing that again. Hopefully, so. I watched uh, Thor: Love and Thunder since the last time we. You mean we Girlfriend in a Coma, the movie? Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yep. Did um, you, does the allegory I said make sense? Where it's sort of it feels it's a it's a bouncy movie, but it's also really sad at the same time. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. It's it's also it's it's an enjoyable movie. Um, the villain is pretty good. Um. Anytime you have a villain that like they make him like you understand why he went that direction, like you like have Arnold Schwarzenegger like, in uh, Batman Forever, mm -hmm. yeah, as Mr. Exactly Freeze. like that. Anytime you're like, oh, okay, there's like you, this guy isn't entirely bad, right? Like some right. some stuff went down. He was trying to do the best he could, he made some wrong decisions, but like there, you can feel some level of empathy for this this bad guy. Anytime you do that, it works all right and 
in these type of movies. And I also like when they can do that without having to stretch it out too much. It wasn't like we had to watch an hour of his. Of yeah, this. yeah, they got they got to it. Yeah. Um, like, here's a prologue. Now you get it. <laughs> I will say the Guardian stuff. I You commented on this as well. Like something is just off with the the banter and the chemistry on the Guardian's scenes yeah the rhythm is completely off and i don't know what it, i didn't know what it was like yeah yeah as you said i already said it and yes it's a very good movie i think it's better than a lot of people have a lot of the, the I liked it. thought yeah, yeah i liked it too i don't think there's anything unlikable about it i think there's some really good parts in it i think that it's you know again it has some of the it's it's very dark at times maybe darker than a lot of other Marvel movies have ever been, but I think there is this kind of shiny coat of paint that they threw on it at certain sure. points sure. that I think people, I, I think people have, may have a hard time correlating those things. I don't know. Like, I understand what Taika was doing as a director with this movie, where he was trying to be like, this is really heavy. So for this really heavy scene, I want to do something else that's really light to balance, you know, to balance it out. But I don't know if that was a hundred percent necessary all the time. And, and we're my... still not building towards anything. No. So I have no idea what's going to happen because they said Black Panther is the last movie of this phase. Phase four ends. Phase with... meandering. Yeah. Just... <laughs> there's no, there's, there's no nothing threat. that ties these movies together. <laughs> Literally nothing. It's very strange. So what are the other than the fact that the multiverse exists, but they don't really have the multiverse in. Uh you know love and thunder the what they do have in love and thunder which is i mean is it really a spoiler he's in the trailer i mean they show they show zeus and we know thor's a god is that you know these gods that people worship technically exist in one some shape or form and in the black panther movies they do worship god so are these gods i don't know gp's already checked out it doesn't matter i'm drinking a coconut summer drink I, I don't know that they've decided they've it seems like they're finally deciding what they want to do for a for a big baddie. But mm-hmm. um these just yeah, there's is it predator. All, yep. Yep, the predator. Good choice. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh that what movie else actually looks really good. The new predator movie. Prey. Yeah. I haven't seen anything. Oh. Did you watch a Bob's Burgers movie? <laughs> I've never watched I, not even sixty seconds of Bob's Burger anything. Oh, I watched the movie because I had it on, I think it's on HBO Max is what I watched it on. Uh, it's cute. I, I like this TV show. The movie is just a long version of, it's essentially a long episode with maybe a few more songs. And uh, it's cute. If you like the show, you'll like the movie. That's really all I got. What else? Mm-hmm. I watched the big one, though, was The Gray Man. I watched that. That is the Russo Brothers the directors of the Captain America movies and the Avenger movies. They directed this movie. It stars Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans. And it's got a lot of, it's actually a good, it's a good dumb action movie. How come Netflix it's, can't make an action movie that gets over 50 on Rotten Tomatoes? Is it that fucking know. hard? I, actually, I feel like this movie probably should. I understand why critics, it, it's not a movie that critics are going to like. There's nothing, there's nothing, no weight to it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not that hard. I mean, like, it's possible to make an action movie where you are interested in the characters and you're like, invested in it. It's been done before, but well, like, I, I cared about the characters while watching it. I still think it's worth your time. It, it's a, like I said, it's an enjoyable movie. I did care about the characters. I thought the action scenes were pretty. There's some really good action scenes in it. The Russo brothers know how to do that as well as anybody. Uh, Ryan Gosling Isn't is really like good seven it. hours long though. It's I think it's two hours and five minutes or something like that. That's it. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I yeah. thought this. I thought this was clocking in at like three hours nope. or something. No, 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 nothing like that. It's it's a and it's a quick watch because it's a lot of you know running and chasing and explosions and Ryan Gosling in a suit shooting people and uh, Anna Diarmas who you know I'll watch in anything really there's not enough of her in that mo- in this movie mm-hmm. if I had any criticism um, but and it also you know it has shades of commando or man on fire that kind of plot line if you you know 
that's that's sort of where what it turns into towards like the second half of the movie so if you're into that kind of thing then you'll you'd like it it definitely has a an 80s throwback vibe to it too bad it doesn't have an 80s watch this now that i know that it's only yeah it's two hours and nine minutes yeah it's a that's acceptable. I and I think, I honestly think the credits are 11 minutes long. Perfect. I love the credits. <laughs> yeah. 80s throwback vibe, 40s Rotten Tomato score. That doesn't surprise me because I guarantee you Commando was not a critically, a pr- critically mm. loved movie either. Let's see. Commando, so. Rotten Tomatoes. Does that have a Rotten Tomatoes sure. score? Sure. Okay. 67%. Okay. I'm surprised it's that high. That's a lot of people who grew up with it reviewing it again. I refuse to believe that's the original score for <laughs> how does the how's the review scores for the princess? Horrible. That's one that I watched. Oh, Horrible. it's gotta be like a 30. That, that one's a tight hour and a half. I know. I watched it too. I, Don't get me I, wrong. You guys, I enjoyed, man. I enjoyed it enough for an hour and a half of what it was. Mm-hmm. You don't want to watch it. It's, it's got a 59. Plot. 59, that's fine. It's mm-hmm. an hour and a half. That's, that's reasonable. 59 yeah. uh, official, but the audience score 44. Really? You know why? Because people Cause don't like strong women. Oh, uh, yeah. Good call. Mm-hmm. Good call. Misogyny will, yeah, yeah. will affect every... Yeah, so it's, it's just... It's pretty much just one long fight scene of this princess fighting her way down a tower. Joey King plays the princess. So the opposite of the raid and dread. Yeah, it's, it's the raid, but going down instead of up. Great. She wakes up. She's chained to a bed. She doesn't quite know how she got there. And then she has to fight her way down to we save her it. family. And we remade the same movie f- for the third time now. Yes, a hundred percent. Sweet. Yeah. And, and and there's a fat guy for comedy relief. There is a fat guy for comedy relief. <laughs> Never seen that before. <laughs> so, uh, you know, hey, yeah. I was just happy to get the call. <laughs> nice. Uh, if you want to see a movie that's the exact opposite of all of those movies. I mean, you probably don't, but if you do, it's called The Outfit, and it's about a, basically a tailor shop in, like, 20s Chicago during, like, you know, the gangster times, and the, the, the mafia uses this tailor shop as a place to, like, as a Dropbox location, and the tailor gets involved in the situation, and it's very well done, very suspenseful, very good acting, think, you'll think about it long after you watch it called the outfit it has a good rotten tomato score i'm pretty sure that's mark rylance right i don't know i'm not familiar with any of the actors in in the movie or anything about it really like i did they didn't seem familiar to me but uh it was really cool i really recommend it and the less you know about it the better it's a very low budget like it takes place the whole thing takes place inside the tailor shop it's an hour and a half i think maybe a little longer but it's really good i heard it was very good did you watch last night in soho yet no I didn't. You should watch that one. I, I'll get there. You should watch that before the Gray Man because you'll. You I'm not going to watch the Gray Man. I can tell you that right now. I know. I'm saying the uh, Gray Man's dumb action, but this last night in Soho, I, I still really like that movie. I'd like to watch good action. I know. Well, that's not There's, last night in Soho is not action. Right. Yes. Anyway, how's the bear? The bear is, you know, that's the show everyone's talking about. So my wife and I decided to watch like the we watched, I think, the first three episodes so far. And I think all nine are out. It's it's one of those shows that says if you if you go to Hulu, they call it a comedy, but it isn't, which I knew going in. So it's not like I was disappointed by that. But each episode's a half hour. It's about a, a guy whose brother died. So he goes to, <laughs> See, so it's it, funny. And so he goes to take over the family restaurant in Chicago. It's a pit beef restaurant in Chicago. And he's just making the beef sandwiches and trying to keep the restaurant afloat. And it's a lot of pressure and high tension and everything is life or death and everyone is miserable and it's a very gray show and everyone is sad and people cry a lot. I'll be skipping that one. I almost watched that. It's, Thanks for letting uh, me know that it's that it's like that. I don't need yeah, that. It's a lot of tension and it's a lot of gray. Yeah. Like if you know, if you want to be anxious while watching a show Fuck with that. no color in it, then I have a show for you. It's called The Bear. They didn't people call it Dub Bear, it. like it's set in Chicago, and they didn't call it <laughs> Dub Bear. No, they didn't call it Dub Bear. And this is this is a this is a comedy. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a comedy. I That's love that know. they call it a comedy because when they when they put it out for awards next year, it's gonna be it, it'll get nominated for everything probably, and it's gonna be in the comedy section. 
And I'm going to be like, this is why there are no good comedies anymore, because this is what's considered comedy. Cash grab. Yeah. Big scam. This is, this is why comedy's dead, because of the bear. <laughs> Have you watched the rehearsal yet? No, I'm not going to. I what? can't watch that. I can't watch that kind you of can't stuff. watch Nathan Fielder? I no, Nathan Fielder gives me anxiety. And that's I his whole personality. Watch, that's his whole I, thing. I understand that's his whole thing. He even and I'm says glad it on the show. Like it. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Mrs. Chibi will not watch it. Yeah, exactly. Because no one needs that in their life. It's no not, one. I mean No one needs it's that. It's not that it doesn't it's not that uncomfortable feeling. You know, the whole the whole the whole idea behind it is that they will they put out a like a thing on craigslist like we'll help you with your problem on tv basically and that's it so they get like a lot of weird people applying and the first episode is a guy who wants to apologize for his for lying to his trivia team uh teammate about his college degree he said he had a master's degree and he didn't anyway they reproduce like the whole bar they re they make like a whole stage and they let the guy you know rehearse everything so he can apologize properly and not be prepared for everything Anyway, it's all about like the people that they get to be on the show. They're all weird. They're like, this one is like on the second episode, like the person is super religious and like talking about like wireless radiation affecting babies and things like that. And they find, <laughs> I don't know, you should watch it. It's really funny. You, the less you know about it, the better. I watched it with Ty. I made Ty watch the second episode uh, and he, he liked it. He might be fucked up now, but he liked it, I think. Okay. Chip, did you ever finish Ms. Marvel? I did. It's fantastic. I wish there was more episodes of Ms. Marvel. Okay. They, they need to make more of that, but now they can't because she's going to be in the Marvels. Right. I think, Although they, I think, I think they, they finished filming that, so they could. Sure. I, I feel like people weren't watching Ms. Marvel or they something. They weren't. It's the but best show Marvel's made But it's yet. really good. I, I stand by that. What's it's good about best. it? Tell me why it's good as compared to other shows it's that I may have watched. It's enjoyable to watch. Like the character, all the acting is good. The writing's good. The uh, characters are all endearing and you want to know more about them and see them do things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a teen comedy drama, like superhero thing. Yeah. So the only... The only count criticism I honestly have of that show is because it's a six episode show is that episodes four and five could have been one slightly longer episode. But even that it's it's an it's a nitpicking. Nitpick. It yeah, is I think no, that's really hundred percent on this show. It's a hundred percent a nitpick. Yeah, which is my, fine. my family loved it. We we wish there was more of it to watch. I think I'm I wish more people would watch that because I want them to make more of shows that. like that. Shows mm -hmm. like that that our family oriented uh, superhero shows. Do you think that Marvel sent this show out to die on purpose? Cause they, they premiered it with three episodes of Obi-Wan left. And at the same time that stranger things was coming no, back why, out. Why would they do that when they they're preparing to put her in a movie? I don't know. That's well, that was the question is why would they put it out at such a bad, such bad timing? They could have put like if episode one was coming out this week. Or yeah, this week, and then led right into She Hulk. Would that have been a better time, or even two weeks ago, as you know, after all the Stranger Things stuff and after all the Obi Wan stuff, maybe have it going on while Comic Con is happening, so you could have that happen. I don't know. It just feels. I, felt I like think they're still comment. trying to figure. I think they're still trying to figure out the whole thing because some of these are are truly mini series, right? Like. WandaVision, that's a mini series. Mm -hmm. This yes. could have been like an ongoing, like seasons of show type of thing. Like it's a very different, like the, they've got to understand, like, are we making this for like, is this supposed to come back or is this a, just like a six, six episode thing where they're mm -hmm. like, I don't know. We'll put Falcon and winter soldier together for six episodes and, and see what happens. Yeah, Not it's much. a very well reviewed show. It's I think it's the best reviewed Marvel show, or or something like that. Or is it the worst? It's one or the other. Uh, it can't be the worst. I think it is the worst. That's, like I think it has hilarious. like the lowest fan score or something like that. I think the it got review bombed by, again, you know, people who hate women and all that kind of, especially you know, women of people of color. So. I've been watching uh, the uh, the Anarchists. It's also on HBO. That's another documentary series. It's only six episodes. Uh, 
It's pretty good. This is a good one. I highly recommend it. If you were into the Nexium one, it's not as like scandalous as that. But if you like watching people that are like are, are off a little and watching them congregate and like, you know, hold their own expos and have some weird shit happen, I would highly recommend the anarchists. It's the, I think they're on episode three right now, but it's only six. So it's you're you're six and done. And the guy, the the guy making the 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 series, like filmed these guys over six years. So it's he really got in in deep with them. And it's not much different than watching like QAnon people. Like they have all these general beliefs, but nothing like specific and just want to like get together in, in Alcapulco for some reason. It's very Alcapulco? interesting. Yep. It's very interesting to see like how it all goes down. And then the big hook that ties it together is that there's a murder that happens during it and you're uncovering what happens, who gets murdered and so on. Anyway, that's the anarchist. Very good. Sounds good. Also been watching Westworld season three, which is excellent. If you've been watching that, I can follow it, which is a big plus in, the big in departure Westworld. departure from the first two seasons? Yes, I know exactly what's happening. Well, Mrs. Cheapy fills me in from time to time, but I do know what's happening, and it's, it's, it's nice. Cool. Season three is nice. 